and they are keys. Turn to Matthew, Matthew 16, Matthew 16, uh, verse 19. verse 19. Everybody there? 16 and 19. Everybody there? Ready? Read. And I will give unto thee peace of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now turn to Isaiah 22 and 20. Twenty-two and verse twenty. Anybody there? Isaiah. Twenty-two, verse twenty. Twenty-two. That in there? So where you get this from? Yeah. What to say? Say it again. It should say the, uh, the keys of the house of David. Yeah, that's that's 20, 22 and 22? 22. Well, what I say, didn't I say 22 verse 22? What I say, 22 and? 20. Oh, 20 and, all right, looking at it, you know, 22 okay. and 22. Isaiah 22 verse 22. Yeah. Ready? Ready, read. The house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. One more time. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. So that's that's Jesus. Um, that we're talking, that we're talking about here. So now, turn to Revelation one and eighteen. Revelation one and eighteen. One and eighteen. Ready? Read Revelation 1 18. I, I am the living and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. One more time. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and of death. Okay, that's Jesus again. Who was dead and resurrected on the third day. So he's alive forevermore. He holds the keys to hell and of death. He also has the key of the house of David. And he has the keys of the kingdom of heaven. There are physical keys. Keys that we all own, 
if we have a car, if we got a home, any key that was made was made for purpose. A key was made to unlock a lock or a padlock. A lock or a padlock key was made for. The purpose of a key and the only purpose of a key is to lock or unlock. If you lock it, the key opens it. If the key opens it, the key also locks it. So it's only one purpose the key has. To lock and to unlock. So, the physical keys are keys that we can see, we can touch. But now, here it is, Jesus saying that he has some keys. Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And Jesus said that he, according to, Ma, to Matthew 18, he said, I will give unto thee, or unto us, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys that Jesus is speaking about are spiritual keys. They are not physical. You cannot touch it. You cannot hold up the keys that Jesus is talking about and see it physically. You cannot use it physically. Hold it and use it. That like you can physically hold something that is tangible, something that you can see and you can feel it, you can touch it. So the keys that what Jesus is talking about are spiritual keys. And these spiritual keys that he's talking about are powerful. Nothing to play with. They ain't nothing to compare to the natural keys or physical keys or material keys. These keys, what Jesus is talking about, is full of power. Full of power. These keys, what Jesus is talking about, have the key has the answer to our prayers. Ask the body of Christ. Jesus says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not a kingdom that you can touch, that you can walk in in your natural body. The kingdom of heaven, what he's talking about, is where he resides, he resides in heaven. Jesus is a spirit, God is a spirit. Holy Spirit is a spirit. We are a spirit being. We are a spirit being, but in order for us to operate in this world, which is all physical and natural, we have to have a natural body. So when God created us, he created us in three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. So we know what our body is. Our body is what we see. Our soul is our mind, our will, our intellect. Our spirit is the real us, which is the spirit that God placed in us. Our spirit is the one that can access these keys and hold these keys and use these keys. It's our spirit. Because the keys are spiritual and it belongs to a spiritual kingdom. It belongs to a spiritual, spiritual us, a spirit God. And it belongs to us spiritually. So we cannot use a spiritual key in the natural, in this world. We cannot use the key that is spiritual to unlock anything that is physical. We have to use a physical key to unlock a physical lock. We have to use a spiritual key to unlock a spiritual lock. God gave Jesus, the key of the house of David. Who was David? The David that they're talking about here is King David. King David happens to be one of the children of Abraham who God made a covenant with that he will make a great nation out of Abraham. And when God told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and that he, his descendants will be as numerous as the sand on the seashore and the stars in heaven. Turn to Genesis 15 and 12. Genesis 15 and 12. And we'll read 15 and 12, and then we can drop down to 
Another covenant. This is the reason why I go, this passage in Isaiah read, the key of the house of David, will I lay upon his shoulder, whose shoulder? Jesus' shoulder. So he shall open and no man can shut. Man in there, but that's what he mean. None can shut. And he shall shut and none, no man or nothing, shall be open to open it. So, Jesus being the heir of David, Jesus being the heir of Abraham, the covenant came to him. Came to him. He is the one that sits on David's throne forever. Where is he seated? He is seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father. He is the seed of, of David that God promised there will always be someone sitting on his throne. So the covenant that was made and handed down to us through Christ and is handed down to the body of Christ, the children of Christ, the followers of Christ, the believers of Christ, all meaning God's children. The ones that have been born again, accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. The covenant has been given to us who belong to God. It is a spiritual covenant. So in order for us to access the blessing of the covenant, of Abraham, we have to think of it spiritually. We cannot think of it naturally. A lot of Christians, pastors, especially the pastors included, you got a hard habit of saying, if you want to see God move, you got to sow a seed. If you want God to do that, sow a seed. But God has already given it to us. You don't have to sow a seed for it. 
You don't have to sow a seed for it. God says in Ephesians, I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm. So if God says in Ephesians chapter 1, and I think it's verse 3, he says, I have blessed thee with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm. That means now, it's spiritual. It is there now. It is there. So everything that we're asking God for is already in the spiritual realm and it already belongs to us. If God says, I've already given it to you, it's ours. But now, you cannot get that to manifest in the natural using natural means. It has to be spiritual in order for us to unlock it. In order for us to receive the blessings as the children of God, then there are guidelines and steps we have to use. We have to know how to use these spiritual gears. We just read in Revelations 1 and 18, Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. And then we read in Matthew 16, 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then in Isaiah 22 and 22, and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open, and none shall shut. And none shall shut what he open. Turn to John 14 and 20. John 14, 20. John 14 and 20. Okay, so here it is. Jesus, Jesus again, Jesus is saying that he is in God. We are in Jesus and Jesus is in us. So if we are in Jesus and Jesus is in us, then who have the keys? We have the keys. We have the keys in Jesus. We have the keys in Jesus. We have the keys to bind to loose, to lock and unlock, to shut. We have the keys to speak life and not death. In order for us to receive the blessings of the covenant that God made with Abraham. Uh, a lot of the blessings are listed in Deuteronomy 28. Blessed shall you be in the flea, blessed shall you be in your basket, blessed shall you be in the stall, blessed shall you be coming in, blessed shall you be gone. Everything your hands touch will, bless, will be blessed. You'll be the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. These are all blessings that God has given to us. We shall be blessed under one condition. We keep his commandments. We keep his commandments. We have the keys because Jesus, I give it to you. I will give it to you. 
We have the keys because we are in Christ Jesus. We have the keys. Now we need to know how to use the keys. In order for us to use these keys, we have to walk in obedience. Read John 14, 21. We just read 20, let's read 21. Everybody there? ready? Ready? Read. He that. One more time. myself to him. So there's a condition, eh? Honest say, he that keep my commandments. In order for us to be able to use these keys successfully, there are conditions. One being, first and foremost, you have to be born again. We have to be the children of God. We have to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. First and foremost, because you have to belong to him. In order for us to partake in the blessings of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we have to belong to God. We have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. First and foremost, right after that, we are commanded to keep his commandments. When we do not keep his commandments, we walk in disobedience to God. Disobedience brings curses on us. Disobedience bring curses that are listed in Deuteronomy 28 from 16, I think, down to 40 something, 50 something, to the end of that, that chapter. It's a lot of curses. We have to keep God's commandments. The two greatest are what? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If we do these two commandments, we would be keeping every commandment God is talking about. Because when you love someone, one, you ain't trying to hurt them. Hate, anger, bitterness, rage, jealousy, envy, uh, covetousness, whatever. You would not have that against your fellow human being. These things would not exist to you. They wouldn't matter to you because the love that you have covers a multitude of sin according to God's word. When you love the way God loves us with unconditioned, in spite of what man do to you, in spite of what people do to you, if you love them the way God said we are to love them, then they cannot be in you. Anger and rage and bitterness cannot be in you. Because you, if you walk according to God's word, when you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, there is no room for sin. There is no room for sin. Sin would not be a problem to you. But our problem comes when we do not fully follow these commandments that God gave us. When someone hurt us, and rightfully so, People hurt us a lot of time. When we don't nothing. When we being sweet. When we being nice. When we going out our way to help people, to assist people. When we dare, whenever they call, we dare. Whenever they need us, we dare. Whenever they ask, of some, or ask us for something, we have it, we give. And they're the same ones Satan turned around and used to hurt us. But when we have that genuine love, that God has for us, no matter what people do to us, we will always find it in our heart to forgive them. Because there's no hate in us. There's no anger in us. There's no, in other words, we have closed the door to sin. When temptation comes, we didn't close that door to temptation. Because of the love in us. When we love according to the way God has instructed us to love. When God says we are to love our neighbors ourselves, would you chop your neighbor? Will you kill your neighbor? Will you stab your neighbor? Will you not feed your neighbor? Would you not give your neighbor a ride? Would you not assist your neighbor? 
If you love, if we love our neighbors ourselves, we want the best for our neighbor. We, everything we want, we would want them to have. That's love. So these are conditions that have to be in alignment in order for us to see these blessings flow. We have to keep sin out of our lives. And most of all, when we sin, we have to ask God to forgive us, to wash us and cleanse us, because we have to keep sin out of our lives at all costs. When we don't keep sin out of our lives, Satan uses it against us. He uses it to bring curses upon us. You go to God, legally go to God, because here it is now, we have already sinned. We have already disobeyed God's word. And so Satan now have a right to destroy us however he feel like it. But before we could fall to any kind of sin or temptation, Satan first have to bring it. Before we could fall to any sin or any temptation, God have to first allow Satan to bring it. How does Satan bring these? Satan, most times, oftentimes, bring these first of all in our dreams because we have to make a covenant with us. We have to make a covenant with us. Satan cannot do anything in this world unless one, God allow him, and two, we give him the power to do it. Satan cannot just come and destroy us if we are living the life God called for us to live. Satan cannot just come and destroy us. He cannot. There have to be an open door that we have left open, we have opened, or we have met it open because of our ancestors. And Satan is doing more moving up and down, being destructive in every area of our lives. So before Satan can bring any kind of destruction on us, there first has to be a covenant. He cannot just show up. So when I said, when I say to you, we have to pay attention to our dreams. It's because most of these covenants are made in our dreams with Satan to destroy us. So we have to pay attention to the dreams that we have. A lot of time we dream, don't dream, don't pick up money in your dream, and you pick up money in your dream. That's a sign of poverty. There's a saying, when you dream about feces, that's money. How much time? That's money. Any money. We have to pay attention to the dreams that, that we dream. So, when there is a covenant other than God's covenant in playing our lives, it's working in our lives, then the covenant is not for good. The covenant is for destruction and it will destroy us eventually. It will destroy us. Same with when we speak negative words. When we speak negative words, we are now opening the door for Satan to now use those negative words against us. So when God said, Death life is in the power of tongue, that's another way that we are destroyed by Satan by the things that come out of our mouth. Because our words carries life and death. Life, if you're speaking blessings over your life, if you're speaking positive words over your life, and death, if you're speaking curses, if you're speaking negative words, if you're uttering failure, if you're always saying, oh, I can't get this, I can never get this. They're all curses, and all of these are what Satan uses against us. So we cannot afford to let that negative come out of our mouth. If you take it, don't let it out your mouth. Because once you let it out your mouth and you do not cancel the nonsense, shut that down, Satan now has that to use against you. And when he uses it against you, then for good is for bad. Then for good is for bad. So, we have one, child of God, two, obey God's commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, keep sin out of your life. As long as you keep sin out of your life, the next thing you have to do now is break every, every covenant, every evil covenant that is. Every evil covenant that we that our forefathers made with, with, with the devil that brought destruction on us. And we did it on Thursday past, where we came up against the spirit of poverty, we came up against apology, and we listed all of the trend that followed our bloodline 
on our mother's side and our father's side. And some of them that follow my bloodline is, is having children out of bedlock, um, being divorced. Uh, there's a lot that I listed on both sides of my family and I realized there were some places, some covenants that I didn't break. So these covenants now you have to break and separate yourself from, shut them down, destroy the evil altars, and destroy the evil altars, and ask God to loose you from every soul tie. For us who've had sex outside of marriage and, and, and we never ask God to loose us from those past relationships, we are spiritually still tied in that person or those people that we slept with. There is a spiritual law. Once you lay with somebody, you are joined with them. Yes. If that person is disgusted and wicked and nasty, you start to pick up them same dirty habits. Why? Because it's a spirit. All of a sudden, you know this person to be nice and sweet. And when they get in with somebody, they change. In fact, that they change, you know, it's now the spirits that the person that they lay with is now in that person. And they have a legal right because now they open themselves up to it. And when you come on a relationship and if you do not repent and ask God to loose those soul ties, you carry those same spirits around. And you're miserable for no reason. You can't understand why you're depressed, why you're going to a situation when a lot of times these are curses that are bound to you and you have not broken. So we have to get rid of all of that by denouncing, announcing, canceling out and asking God, first of all, to forgive us. Once all of that is finished, there is a light at the tunnel. We can now freely use what God has given to us, what Jesus gave to us, and he gave us the keys. When we open up our mouth, we open up our mouth in prayers. We speak. Prayers is dialogue between us and our Father, between us and our, our Redeemer. Prayers is us speaking to God one-on-one. -on -one. Prayers is us opening up to God and allowing God to commune with us, to speak with us, to get into his presence is what prayers is. Prayers build us. Prayers bring the breakthroughs that we're looking for. Prayers is another weapon that we use against Satan and his kingdom to pull it down. So in order for us to use these keys now, we have to speak that the right doors be open. First of all, when you go back in Isaiah, what he says, and I will lay the key, and I will lay upon him, upon his shoulder, uh, so he shall open and none shut. So now you speak, the right open doors. You are in Christ, so you have that legal right to speak that every negative door, no, every right door be open. Pray and ask God that the right change come. Father, open up the right doors for me. Open up blessings, open up loose unto me. Good health, loose unto me favor with God and man. Loose unto me the plans that you have for my future. Loose. In Matthew, he gave us the key to do what? Bind and loose. So now we're using the key to loose. We're using the key now to speak to God in our prayers to loose what we want to see. Manifest here. A good life, good health, children prosperous, us prosperous if our promotion is being held up, lose our promotions. If if a good relationship is being held up to get your hand of our, our relationship, you have now the keys to lose what you want good to happen in your life. You have the keys to open up the right open door to open up the right doors for you. You have the keys. Some doors have to be open for us to walk through. Some doors have to be shut. Jesus got the keys. He have the keys. God gave him the keys to shut doors that no man could open. There's some doors that we need to ask God to shut in our lives. Shut. In order for us to see some breakthroughs, some doors have to be closed. 
Some of us who like to go out. Nothing wrong with going out. But if you're going to spend all your energy on your days so of just partying, how are you going to find time for God? Sometimes we have to shut down. Sometimes we have to just sit quiet and say, okay, God, show me what I need to close out. Show me what I need to let in. Satan fight us hard because we don't understand what we have it spiritually to use against Satan who is a spirit. The wrong doors has to be closed. These doors that is bringing destruction in our lives, a lot of times, if we, a lot of times when we sit down, we hurt in our head, how are you supposed to do this? How are you supposed to get this? What are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to handle this situation? Cast it on God. Give it to God. And ask God to shut these wrong doors. Then he tells us we must cast our cares. Let's cast some. Give him everything. Everything that concerns us belongs to God. He asks for it. It's a command. So let's give it to him. Let's not just hold some back. Let's give him everything that concerns us. Let's shut these wrong doors. We got the keys. Shut the doors to death. God gave us the keys. Jesus has the keys to hell and to death. Anything that looks dead in your life, anything that isn't moving, that's stagnant, that has stopped, and you feel it should have been manifested by now, or things ain't looking right, or you keep going around the same mountain, then you need to speak life to that. Bind the spirit of death off of it, because what? We have the power to bind also, eh? Bind the spirit of death. Bind the spirit of death off your finances. Bind the spirit of death off your relationship. Bind the spirit of death out of your business. Bind the spirit of death out of your house. Death isn't just a physical death. Death is, a, is, a death is a, 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 anything that's dead in your life that you feel should be moving and alive. Because in order for us to see it, Got to move. It has to move. Bind evil forces that is hindering you. Bind all evil forces that is getting you discouraged, that is causing you to doubt. Bind them. Bind them. Because once we bind them, because we're using the keys that God, Jesus has given to us, once we bind them in the name of Jesus, how, Satan got to go. Satan has to go, but we play around because we don't understand what we have. And then we, there are times when we have to pray more than just once. More than just once. When Jesus, right before Jesus was crucified, Jesus, after he had a healing service, Jesus took Peter on the sons of Zelie, and he went up in the mountain to pray and he said to them, stay with me, watch with me for a little while. And when he said that to them, he went a little distance and he prayed. And he said that he prayed for an hour. When he came back, he found them asleep. Sleeping. Jesus was praying now. These are his disciples. One hour he prayed. And they were sleeping when he came back. And so Jesus said to Peter, Peter, you have to watch. You have to. In other words, you have to be alert of what's going on around you. You cannot be sleeping. The body of Christ is asleep. And so when he said that to Peter, he went back again to pray. And he came up and they were sleeping again. He didn't disturb them. It said he went a third time to pray. Let me tell you something. The prayer that Jesus prayed was one prayer. But he prayed that one prayer three times. Father, it said that he was heavy. He was sorrowful. Because he knew what he was getting ready to go through physically. He knew that it would have been horrible. Wow. The little picture we see, one puppy and one puppy and one puppy and Nail so pretty in his hand and his feet. That ain't what he went through. It said that he was so disfigured they couldn't recognize him. He was disfigured, he was bent. 
and the whip that they use when they lash you. It pull your flesh out. So the little pretty picture, that ain't how Jesus died. No. He went to a horrific death for us. The prayers that Jesus prayed, it said, Father, if it's all possible, take this stuff from me. He knew he was going to the cross. He knew the suffering he had to bear. He said, take this cup from me. What he was doing, he was pouring out to God. He was telling God, truthfully, God, this is a lot. This is a lot for me to go through. So please, if it's possible, remove this. Let me not go to the cross. Let me not be crucified. Let me not go through this horrible death. If it's possible. And at the end of that prayer, he said, nevertheless, not my will but your will be done. Three times he prayed that prayer. So there are times when you don't see a breakthrough, pray again. When you don't see the breakthrough, pray again. But make sure when you pray, you pray from your heart. You give God your heart. Don't come pretty and have no prayers to God. Prayers ain't pretty. Prayer is warfare. You need to pray the prayers that will bring results to your life. Get bold. Get radical when it comes to say, shut him down. Shut him down. Say it right by the name of Jesus. Oh no, oh no. Satan, you are under my feet. Get thee behind me, Satan. You shut him down in Jesus' name. You got the power. We have the power. We have to use it. And we cannot get tired praying. We cannot get tired using these keys. Our breakthrough is in the spiritual realm. Our breakthrough has to manifest here in the natural realm. Second, because it's already there. So we have in speaking, which is prayers, we address our speech or our speaking to God. And say that we address our speech to God when we ask God in our prayers. Jesus said, ask and what? Shall be given. So when we come to God speaking, we're asking God. We're asking God. We're using the keys. When we come to Satan, that speech again. Satan, I bind you, I bind you, spirit of doubt, I bind you, spirit of fear, I bind you, spirit of hindrance, I bind you, spirit of rejection, I bind you, spirit of lack, and I cast you all in the abyss from out of every area of my life, like a man you never to come back again. Spirit of stagnancy, spirit of delay, I bind you. Spirit of division, I bind you, and I cast you in the abyss. That's using the power that God has given to us. When we use the weapons that are also spiritual, when we use them, they work. We cannot get discouraged because we don't see them. You can't see, not, you can't see spirit unless God open up your eyes to see spiritually, to see in the spiritual realm. Then you'll be able to see angels. You'll be able to see. But if God don't open up your eyes for you to see the spiritual realm, then that's where trust comes in. You have to trust the word of God. You have to trust it to know that when you're speaking it to God, and when you're speaking it to Satan, shutting it down, you have to believe that what you are praying and what you are saying, what you are commanding, will happen. We cannot go without praying. We have to pray. And of course, put on the whole armor because we are in a spiritual fight. We cannot take natural to fight spiritual. We'll never win. We'll never win that war. Our, our flesh is too weak to come up against Satan. And this is the reason why we put on the whole arm of God. Because only when we put on the whole arm of God, our spirit man is now protected from everything Satan will throw at us. He attacks the spirit man. He attack our spirit man. And then it manifests in the body. He attack our spirit man. 
So when we put on our whole armor, we have a better chance of being successful against Satan. When we use our prayers, we have a better chance. When we use the sword, which is the spirit, which is the word of God, when we give God back his word and when we, when we shut Satan down with God's word, we use the sword, we have a greater chance of victory in our lives. And we will see the breakthroughs, we will see the blessings, we will see the covenant that God has made with our forefathers in Christ Jesus come to pass in our lives. Because we have already gotten it. We already own it. God was able to give the keys to the house of David to God because of a covenant that he made with Abraham. Because of the covenant he made with Abraham. We are in Christ Jesus. So we give, we give God thanks. And Lord, for us who have not asked you for these keys, Lord, I ask you now to give us your keys. Give us these spiritual keys. Show us how to use these, oh God, mightily to pulling down our strongholds, Father God. Teach us, oh God, how to warfare correctly, how to wage war against Satan and the kingdom of darkness correctly. Father God, teach our hands to warn our fingers to fight. For your words say that you are God of war. We belong to you, so teach us how to fight and how to be victorious in every battle against our Satan, who is Satan and his devils, his demons, the kingdom of darkness. Father God, I thank you right now, Father God, for your word. Teach us, O oh God, every day to put on our armor, to pick up our sword, to use the keys to bind, to loose, to close and to open in the mighty name of Jesus, to speak life and to destroy death in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all that you've given to us now, Lord. Only you could teach us how to use them. Teach us how to use them and to be successful in every battle that we wage against Satan, Father God. For you call us to be a soldier in your army. So God, if you have an army and you call us to be soldiers, then you call us to fight. Teach us, oh God, how to be mighty soldiers for your kingdom. Mighty soldiers for our families. Mighty soldiers on the battlefield for you, Father God. Teach us to deny ourselves and crucify our flesh on the cross of Jesus Christ. And Lord, give us the strength and the faith to pick up our cross and follow you, Father. And Lord, as Jesus taught us to pray, not our will, but your will be done in our lives. Father God, destroy our will and let your will be the will that we follow day and night, year in and year out, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to break us, shape us, and mold us to be the man, the women of God that you place us on this earth to be, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And say, then I serve you notice right now. I close by the power of God every evil door, every doorway that is still open in our lives. Father God, close them in the name of Jesus. Seal them with the blood of Jesus. Show us, Father God, if we open them again, show us when we open them that we may ask you to close them again, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let us not walk in ignorance, Father God. But let us walk in knowledge and understanding as you have given to us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I lose, Father God, the blessings, Father God, upon us that you made with our forefathers. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, for showing us, Father God, that they will manifest in this natural realm for us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And God, I give you thanks in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.